everybody. Uh, thank you for introduction. This will be a very interesting talk because I'm going to show you how to make your JavaScript programs faster. But let me first introduce myself. I'm coming from academia. I'm a PhD student at uh, TU Darmstadt. It's an awesome university in Germany. And I work in a research group, which main goal is to build tool like techniques to make um, software more secure, reliable, and efficient. And uh, we are now focusing on JavaScript. But if you ask me, where do you use JavaScript and why do you use JavaScript, I would tell you, <clears throat> We built JavaScript tools that reason about JavaScript. And we found JavaScript really interesting language, challenging, but also very unusual. So don't take this literally, but there are still <laughs> many things in JavaScript code that uh, have to be improved. So this is my first time at JSConf, and I'm really happy to be here because uh, I, I personally believe that whatever we do on the research side should be also very beneficial for the community. And now let's start. Have you ever experienced JavaScript programs that are like this? Can you raise your hand? Yeah. And in this talk, I'm going to tell you how to make JavaScript programs like this. And believe me, it's, it's not very difficult. But let's first agree on importance of JavaScript performance. And I would remind you that 90% of almost all websites nowadays are powered with some amount of JavaScript. And having efficient and highly optimized JavaScript is very important to keep your web application responsive. But when we talk about mobile world, we also can see that many mobile applications nowadays are written partially or entirely in JavaScript. And we don't want mobile applications that drains our battery. So highly performant JavaScript is also crucial for energy efficiency. I hope uh, that I convinced you why JavaScript performance is important. But probably some of you would ask me, why would we care about manual optimizations of JavaScript, especially in the presence of highly optimized JIT compilers? And almost every browser or platform that runs JavaScript nowadays have some sort of JIT compiler, even Internet Explorer, yes. So for example, Chrome, Opera, uh, Node.js, they employ V8. Uh, Firefox has SpiderMonkey. Uh, Internet Explorer has Chakra. And JIT compilers are known to be very powerful. Yeah, that's true. But I would remind you that optimizations are limited. When I say limited, I don't mean number of optimizations are limited, but I mean the situations in which certain compiler optimization can take place, because compilers, JIT compilers, optimize JavaScript code in the runtime, and they make certain assumptions of JavaScript code. If they are not met in the runtime, simply compilers refuses to optimize JavaScript code or de-optimizes previously optimized JavaScript code. So, because JavaScript performance is obviously very important and optimizations are limited, developers still manually optimize their code. And to understand what type of optimizations developers apply and um, what do they consider as important optimizations, we did analysis of performance issue reports from popular JavaScript projects. And here I, I would mention only a few of them. So we studied bug tracking system of Angular project, Ember, React, jQuery, Underscore, and many more. Because for those projects, we understood that performance is significant concern. 
and we analyze in total and reproduce successfully 98 performance issues. Now I'm going to give you some examples of the real-world JavaScript performance issues and how developers fix them. So let's first start from the most prevalent ones. One, um, I, I, I don't know, would you guess this, but please don't be surprised if I show you that most, um, uh, that significant amount of performance issues we analyzed are related to foreign loop. And this is not surprising because uh, compilers in many cases do not successfully optimize this statement. And this particular piece of code iterates over properties of some object and checks whether the property is enumerable, which means directly defined on the project, on, on the object. So developers solve this problem by using built-in object.keys method and traditional foreign loop. And to convince developers to apply certain optimizations, uh, people, what, what people usually do, they uh, create micro-benchmark and run micro-benchmarks on JSPerf. Are you, I, I hope you're familiar with JSPerf. Can you raise your hand if you're familiar? Okay, almost all of you are familiar, but this is online micro-benchmark to, to compare uh, performance of, of different code uh, snippets written in JavaScript. And as you know, the, um, it, it represents how many operations per second one code can execute, and the higher value is, is better one. So, and for some input, uh, you can save almost 60% of the execution time by using object.keys built-in method and, and for loop instead of for in. Uh, this is another example of uh, performance issue in JavaScript. And yeah, it's not really performance-wise to create regular expression every time when split method is, is called. And for this particular project, the split method was called many times during the execution. So it's um, much more efficient to uh, store the computation of um, regular expression creation and to reuse this computation later in your code. And by running these two fragments of code on JSPerf, we managed to save uh, for some input, 15% of execution time in Firefox. Um, another example shows how you can copy elements from one array to another array. So what you can do, you can just iterate over elements of one array and append new array with, a, with every element of the original array. But it's much efficient and much smarter to call built-in array prototype slice method. And for this particular example, we saved almost 200% execution time in both, um, in both browsers, Chrome and Firefox. And the last example is about how JavaScript developers use sometimes, not always, um, JavaScript API in inefficient way. So a couple of years ago, it was really popular to use split and join calls for doing search and replace in JavaScript. And nowadays, since replace method is very well optimized by many browsers, it's much more efficient to, to use replace built-in method. And please keep in mind this example. I will, I will come to this later on. And on JSPerf, we could save 44% of execution time in Chrome for this particular tool, for this particular optimization. So what I would like to discuss now is, um, well, it's common belief that having optimized code uh, would sacrifice maintainability of your code, which is 
for some optimizations, true, but if you could uh, remind yourself of the previous example, you could see that many optimizations were pretty simple and they didn't change complexity of the source code almost at all. So, is this really the case for real-world optimizations in JavaScript? Well, I, I would, wouldn't say that. And to prove this, we measured for every optimization how many statements the optimization change in the source code and what is the difference in cyclomatic complexity between original and optimized version of the program. And if you could see, most of the optimizations almost do not change complexity at all. So, having this in mind, um, I would say that, yeah, optimizations are relatively simple, that by relatively simple change, changes, uh, you can optimize your JavaScript code significantly. And we also observe that many optimizations are instances of recurring patterns, which means that one type of optimization we found in, in multiple projects. But imagine the following situation. You use your split and join pattern all over your code base, and you use it in many places. Optimizing this particular pattern would require a lot of manual effort, and maybe some of you would give up of this optimization. But we wanted to, to answer, is it possible to automate the process of uh, optimizing JavaScript program? And I don't have a general answer to this question, but I can say for many optimizations, we succeeded to, to do this in almost fully automatic way. So what we did, we built a tool for semi-automatic refactorings. And the general idea of this tool is uh, to provide as an input something that we already have, and this is the program we want to optimize. And some set of tests, they can be functional tests on which you check correctness of your code. To use it as an input and as output, you have optimized program. It sounds, sounds really promising. So let's take a closer look into the, tool and into the, the structure of the tool and what tool actually does. So as I mentioned, you use your program set of tests and you describe the pattern you want to, to optimize, you want to refactor. And our tool is based on AST matching and rewriting. I hope that most of you are familiar with the AST term. This is nothing, in, simply speaking, it's, um, it's a tree representation of your, uh, of your JavaScript code. And as addition to this, we wanted to report only those optimizations that actually provide some performance benefit. And that's why we, we do performance measurement for every optimization that our tool applies. And of course, as output, you have optimized program. So what is pattern specification? We wanted to keep it simple. So we said that our pattern will be just two fragments of JavaScript code. How the original code should look like and how the optimized code should look like. But we also wanted somehow to make this pattern abstract, which means that you don't have to write pattern for every project. So you can, dis you can make your pattern specification once in a general way and reuse it for many projects later on. And we also wanted to make the pattern abstract enough so you can cover as many cases as possible. So to do this, we introduce placeholders for some constructs in JavaScript. I don't say that this list of placeholders you, 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 are, you can see now is exhausted. It's not. We, we are working on, on adding, more, um, adding more placeholders in our tool. But for now, our tool uh, supports placeholders for expressions, identifiers, and literals. And if you remember the example of split and join, we can say, OK, the split can be 
called on any expression in JavaScript, which means not only on identifier or some string. It can be also called some property access, can be called on uh, some result of the function call, and so on. And as an input to the, as a parameter of the split, we can have any identifier or literal the same with join. And so you can see how the optimized code should look like. Based on the pattern specification, our tool generates the ASTs for each code fragments. And for generating ASTs, we use an existing parser called this Prima. But yeah, the, the, the idea about the, the transformation is not uh, specific to, to the output of this Prima, can be applied to any other parser. So having two STs uh, in our program, we generate the, our tool actually generates the program's STs and tries to find uh, a match between ST of the first fragment of our pattern specification and sub subtree in program's ST. And when the match is found, it rewrites the ST of the original program as our ST of optimized code looks like. So are you still awake? <laughs> OK. I would, I, would illustrate, um, I would illustrate the first step of our tool on, on the examples. Uh, so given the first fragment of our pattern specification, we generate the ST. It usually looks like something like this. And uh, for some program, we try to find a match between the first ST and some subtree of the program's ST. And we say the two STs match if the number of nodes, position, and the types also match. But we have special rules for the placeholders. For example, this expression, one placeholder, can match to any tree structure in real JavaScript program that represents some expression. And also this identifier $x can match to any identifier or literal in JavaScript, and the same with the $y. So now we have all um, subtrees or program ST that match the pattern specification. The next step is to rewrite all those subtrees. What we first use, we first generate the AST of the second fragment or optimized code of our, our pattern specification. And um, as you can see here, there are some nodes that should be resolved. I mean, all, all nodes that represent the placeholders. We just use what we found. Uh, replace placeholders with the real nodes, insert this AST instead of the found AST, and generate a new code. Yeah, that's how the optimization takes place. But is it worth? Does it bring some perform performance benefit? Well, it depends on the tests that are given as an input. So we use those tests to run original and modified uh, optimized version of the program. And uh, we show to the developer only optimizations that really bring some performance, performance benefits. So we run every test repeatedly until some minimum measurable execution time is, is reached. And we compare the execution times of the original and optimized program. It's nice. We have a tool. Is it useful? Well, we didn't know is it useful, really. But we decided to run this tool on some uh, real-world JavaScript projects and on some patterns we, we found. So we made a specification for seeing, uh, six uh, patterns that uh, change at most one statement in JavaScript, and we run this um, tool against 10 Node.js libraries, which we extracted from NPM repository. And yes, we found new optimizations. 
We found 35 potential optimizations opportunities, and 24 of them actually show some speed up. Now I'm going to give you an example of one optimization we perform by our tool. So in this particular function, uh, the type of the input is checked by using class comparison. Class comparison in JavaScript is done by calling toString uh, method on object. So the developers first um, use class comparison to check the type of the input, at, and if it's, if it's not true, they use instance of operator. Instance of operator does the same thing. But it seems to be more efficient. So it's more efficient to use first instance of than class comparison. And we found 10 potential optimizations of this pattern. Six of them show the actual speed up. And we reported uh, this optimization as a pull request to MomentJS library. And they accepted this pull request, merged, and optimized their code as we proposed. So I would um, conclude this talk by saying that, yeah, you can, um, you can reach a really nice performance benefit by using very simple optimizations. And semi-automatic refactorings can help you to achieve this goal. So instead of slow turtle, you can have your rocket turtle. Thank you.